In this service video, I want to discuss with you the procedure for doing a visual inspection of a nozzle. Uh, this inspection is going to determine if the nozzle is in a safe operating condition and you can continue to use, or if the nozzle needs to be removed from service and have further uh, inspection and repairs done before putting back into service. Uh, we've got several different nozzles to look at here. Many of the inspection points on these nozzles are, are the same regardless of the nozzles being slightly different. We're looking for many of the same things across the, uh, the series of nozzles. Uh, we'll first start by taking a look at an old 50 to 350 handline series nozzle. Uh, we'll start at the back end, we'll work our way forward. Uh, what we find in so many cases that when truck checks are being done, uh, the truck checkoff sheet says four nozzles. Somebody takes account one, two, three, four, yep, four nozzles and moves on. Uh, what we want to do is take just a couple more minutes to take down the nozzle, take it off the hose line, and do a good visual inspection. So we'll start at the back end here. Uh, the first thing we want to look for, is there a hose gasket in the nozzle? Is the hose gasket in good shape? Uh, if the, the hose gasket looks good and it's there, then good, we'll move on. In the case of a nozzle that's got a slide valve, uh, in most cases it will also have a debris screen in the back. Is the debris screen there? Is it in good condition? Uh, and the other thing we want to look for, is it clogged with the debris? Uh, if it's done its job and it's caught that debris before it's gone through the nozzle, let's go ahead and clear the debris out before putting it back on the hose line. As we continue to move forward, the next thing we're going to want to check is if the nozzle has a bail handle, how does the bail handle cycle? This one's very rough, so that would be an indication that this needs to be removed from service and some sort of additional attention given to the nozzle. So we've noted that here on this nozzle that it's got a, a bail handle that's difficult to operate. One that operates freely should be very easy to open and close. So this would be considered normal and okay to re, um, return to service. If your nozzle has an aluminum bail handle, one of the things you're going to want to check is these stop lugs on either side. The stop lugs house the detent spring and ball that give the bail handle the click, click, click feel as you open and close it. Uh, basically the bail handle hold positions as you gate the nozzle. Um, you want to make sure that those are intact and have not popped out of the handle as these have. Uh, again, that would be something that should be considered this should be removed from service and some further attention given to it. Also while inspecting the bail handle, especially on a nozzle that has an internal slide valve, you're going to want to inspect the valve disc. The valve disc is what the handle attaches to to hold it to the valve body. You can see in this case the valve disc is sitting proud. Uh, it's not flush with the valve body. In every case, this in, in a normal situation, this should be flush with the valve body. If you notice your valve discs are sitting outward of the valve body, the nozzle should be removed from service till this can be repaired. As we move forward, uh, if it's a combination nozzle, of course, there's going to be a shaper that turns to change the, the straight stream to fog pattern. We want to make sure that that operates freely and goes all the way from straight stream all the way back to full fog. Uh, if this is a nozzle that you continue past fog when you twist you go into flush, you want to make sure it goes into flush smoothly. And when you return from flush, you want to make sure that the barrel cone returns with the shaper as you go back towards straight stream. Again, this one it, it operates freely until you go to flush, in which case the barrel cone doesn't come all the way back when going back to straight stream. Again, that would be an indication that this needs some additional attention before being put back into service. This again is a, is a good operating nozzle. You can see as we pull that back to flush, it pulls the barrel comb back, and as we go back to straight stream, it returns with the shaper in that case. If you have a nozzle that's got a dual pressure knob on the front, first of all, of course, you're going to want to make sure it's there and that it's not broken. Um, if it is missing, of course, that again, you want to replace that. Uh, it doesn't, by that missing, doesn't render the nozzle inoperable. It just puts it into a low pressure mode. Um, the other thing you're going to want to inspect if that knob is missing is damage to the baffle. Uh, oftentimes, these may take a front end hit that can dislodge or break that knob uh, and also transfer some of that damage to the baffle. So you'll want to do a low flow test. Uh, very low flow to see if there's more water coming out one side of the nozzle than the other that would indicate a bent baffle. If you're using a nozzle that has a shaper with spinning teeth, these of course TFT nozzles have stainless steel spinning teeth. If you're looking at other nozzles, you may want to make sure that none of the teeth are broken or missing. With the stainless steel, this would of course be a very rare occurrence to have these broken or missing. 
But the big thing you're looking for, do they spin freely? When you expect those to spin, you want those to spin. This nozzle has a uh, gallonage ring to change the gallonage setting of the nozzle. Does that move freely to all flow settings? If it does, then again, that's considered good. This G-Force nozzle happens to have a slightly different selector ring, uh, but again, you're looking for the same thing, free operation. As you're doing your checks, you want to look for abnormalities. You know, if there's a threaded hole, does it have a screw in it? Um, if, if, if you have a blank threaded hole, typically there should be a screw in that hole and you may want to look further to see what screw needs to be installed there. If after performing the visual inspection of the nozzle, you notice any items that uh, may render the nozzle inoperable, as we did here with this improperly operating bale handle and the barrel cone not returning from flush, the nozzle should be removed from service and uh, at a very minimum of field lubrication performed. Uh, if field lubrication doesn't correct the problems with the nozzle, then of course it needs to have some additional service work done, probably some more extensive disassembly. Um, we can help in uh, directing you in these repairs if you choose to do them yourself, or of course they can be sent to our service department uh, where service work rarely runs past 24 hours. Uh, feel free to get a hold of us for additional points of visual inspection at 800-348-2686 and ask for the technical service group or you can find us online at tft.com.